All right, everyone. Um, my name is Flo Davis, and today I'll be doing a presentation on design thinking. Your why is more important than what. So, uh, pretty much for this presentation, there's gonna we're gonna try our best to cover cover a lot of material here. But um, if you would like to download the slides, just make sure that you put your email um, and name here at this address, or if you just wanna network with other members, um, this will be kind of like a Google Sheet share, so I can send the slides to you. So we'll kind of get started with a little bit of my background. So I have over 10 years experience in design and web development. Most of my career has been in Silicon Valley, um, where I had the pleasure of working for uh, several Fortune 500 companies, including Google, Apple, and Salesforce. Um, right now, currently, I'm the, currently the founder of Focus Vision Design Group, where I focus on workshop and trainings in the area of design, as well as I'm a creative lead for a large financial institution. So if you would like to connect with me, uh, just go to linkedin.com in slash for Flo Davis. And if you'd like to join my meetup group, uh, meetup.com forward slash front end creatives. And just a little bit of background about me. Um, I'll give you, so my presentation style, um, I try to be as really interactive as possible. Um, I know <laughs> per se people can't jump on stage, but if you have any questions, um, feel free to um, dr drop something in the chat and then I'll try to ask you guys questions as well. So this is kind of like, what do you think design thinking is, right? So a lot of times when you hear design thinking, you see a lot of sticky notes, more sticky notes, more sticky notes like crazy. Do you get the picture? It's okay, if it doesn't matter. That's pretty much the wrong impression of design thinking if you think it's just a bunch of sticky notes. Let me show you a video um, of what design thinking, oh, sorry, that, that really is. Oh, so in this, let me see if, uh, I apologize that Google Slides doesn't show um, the video here. Let's see if I could bring a video over to you guys so you could kind of see what design thinking is. So I'll escape this full screen mode just for a second. So this is really what a true product of design thinking is. Robot specializes in modern welfare technology that helps the elderly and people with mobility disabilities to become more independent and self-reliant. The company has developed innovative kitchen and bathroom designs for private homes, senior housing, schools, and institutions that are height adjustable and super accessible. Ropox Kitchen Solutions construct upper cabinets that are height adjustable either manually or electrically. These can also move up from the wall to have a closer proximity to the user or stay in place where only the shelves are height adjustable. A kitchen countertop can also be mounted on a lifting system. You can even choose a kitchen from a regular kitchen supplier and mount the lifting systems to create a disability-friendly kitchen. This allows wheelchair users to adjust the table to the height they need to sit comfortably by the table. It's also an obvious choice when children help out in the kitchen. The robot's kitchen solutions make the users more independent and self-reliant in the kitchen due to the adjustment possibilities. The kitchen solutions are suitable for training kitchens, private homes, senior housing, schools and institutions. Robox's bathroom solutions offer a design that's flexible, functional, stable, and ergonomic. Mm -hmm. 
All of these factors are important when customizing the needs of the elderly and the disabled. With easy to reach and maneuver wash basins, grab rails, shower seats, toilet lifters, support arms and nursing benches within an individual's range, the user can have a better quality of life. Robox provides two types of height adjustable wash basins, the swing wash basin and the support wash basin. The swing wash basins are ideal for wheelchair users and walking impaired people as they can use the wash basin while seated to prevent fall injuries. The support wash basin is solid and especially suitable for walking impaired people. If someone uses the wash basin in combination with the shower seat and toilet support arms, they can get great support and can be easily seated in daily bathroom situations. Robox bathrooms make the elderly and people with mobility disabilities more independent that means they can get the assisted aids that make it easier to wash their hands, use the toilet and take a bath. The need for help from nursing assistance is also reduced and the caregivers get more time for other tasks. That's all for today and if it's your first time here make sure to follow or subscribe. I'll see you again very very soon. Awesome, awesome. So that really that sums up what the uh, design thinking really is all about. And this is one of innovative products for design thinking. I'm going to go back just a second. So I, I see a lot of people asked about the Google um, Sheets. So I'm going to drop this in the chat really quickly. So you just sign here and just put your name, uh, email, LinkedIn, and we'll definitely get the slides to you. So before we saw a bunch of sticky notes and then we've seen a, um, an innovative product from design thinking. So what is design thinking in a nutshell and what it's all about? So design thinking is a philosophy and a set of tools that helps you solve problems creatively. There are many problem solving philosophies, including lean, agile, and Six Sigma. But what makes design thinking unique is these other technologies focus exclusively on the problem or some technology. Design thinking takes a human-centered approach, which means it empathizes in figuring out who are you designing for, what are the needs, only then can you help them side, solve the problem and innovate on their needs. So basically same thing like what I just showed you guys. You really, um, the user at that point was disabled or elder, elderly user. So the main thing that, um, design thinking is just a certain type of philosophy, right? So the main thing that distinguishes design thinking from a lot of these method, methodology, it takes a very human-centered, human human-first approach. So you're really empathizing with the user and putting yourself in that person's shoes. Some of the main framework that we have in um, design thinking. Now, remember, this is not a linear framework, but there is a five-step process to this. Empathize, uh, pretty much what we saw in the video earlier. Innovation should be human-centered, um, define, innovation should solve a problem, ideate, innovation is born from a clash of ideas, test, innovation should be refined as, as well as prototype. And here are other, again, the same framework, not a linear path, but different levels of understanding. They have pretty much the same five, six consistent principles. Uh, implement, put the vision into effect, empathize, conduct research, develop, an understanding of the users, define, combine all your research, and observe where a problem exists, ideate, ideate uh, generate a range of crazy creative ideas, prototype, build real and tactile uh, representation, as well as test. So test is also major, getting that uh, real feedback from your users. And last, we're gonna kinda Drill this into your head, right? So again, one, empathy, understanding the user's problems. Two, define the problem concretely. Three, ideate, ideate come up with multiple solutions. Um, one example might be a design sprint. Um, four, prototype. And five, test with real users. Mm -hmm. 
So what is empathy? So empathy is a broad sense. Um, the term of empathy is the ability to see the world through the eyes, lenses of others. Even though design thinking, like I've uh, said, is not a linear process, I honestly believe that um, empathy is one of the most important steps in the process. So I was spending a lot of time here on that, on the empathy part. So how do you um, empathize from a user perspective? So that's pretty much a question. Does anyone have any idea of what they would do to like uh, empathize from a user uh, perspective? Feel free to drop it in the chat. Oh yeah, role paying. That's really good. Put yourself in someone else's shoes. Okay, awesome, awesome, cool, cool. So as a designer or creative problem solver, you should start with observing, engaging, and empathizing with the users. Storytelling, oh yeah, that's a really good one. Put yourself in their place from their view. Correct, correct, awesome, awesome. You guys are awesome. Find a diverse test group to ask questions. So <laughs> this is kind of a trick question. <laughs> and then um, I wanna, I didn't explain the difference between empathy and sympathy, but I'm gonna take a time out and see if anyone can kind of get it. And then I'll give you guys a real world example of empathy versus sympathy. Um, but I wanna see like where your minds are going so far. So uh, drop in the chat uh, the difference between empathy and sympathy. Let's see what we have here. Find it. Anyone want to take a stab at empathy versus sympathy? All right. <laughs> well, I'll give you guys, I'll give you guys an example. Oh, empathy is feeling for them. <laughs> Trying to Google, no, no Googling. Use your brain, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> empathy, understanding, sympathy, feeling bad, laugh out loud. All right. All right, let me give you guys an example. So um, I'll, I'll start off with an example and then I'll go into the explanation. Oh, okay, we have one more. Empathy is the ability to understand other people's feelings as if we're having them for ourselves. Sympathy refers to ability to take part in someone else's feeling. I hope you didn't Google that, James, but great answer. <laughs> empathy creates action. Mm, nice. <laughs> okay, awesome. So I'll give you guys an example, right? So um, this wasn't my test group, but say they had a test group of designers. They were all in the room. And then we're, we're making them choose to design for accessibility. Um, in this test group, we said um, at the end of the day, you have to use the bathroom, right? So what they did is we waited for the users to like, we, we did a, a kind of a test where we roped their hands together and also roped their feet <laughs> together. And before they had to use the bathroom, they had to hop to the bathroom. So that's pretty much like, so our persona or our users were like an older elderly generation of people that were disabled. So their experience as a designer was completely different from, okay, I'm just getting up using the bathroom and to the person where they're actually feeling um, pretty much kind of piggybacking off what James was saying, feeling um, the empathetic for the user. So sympathy, I, I feel sorry for you, uh, I understand, but empathy, I really, as many ways I can, I put myself in that situation and being hindered in that situation creates you to do better design decisions, also make better problem solving uh, decisions from being that place of an empathetic user. Uh, prime example, I'll give another one, accessibility. Uh, to to the, the video I showed earlier to the average person might be, okay, that's really convenient, right? But to this disabled veteran or someone who maybe lost their legs um, in war and battlefields, like, wow, I have a, a chance to get my life back and be normal again. So when you design, um, and not just designing, again, I want to get deeper into design thinking. It's beyond design. It's like a creative problem solving. You really want to be, hey, I'm this person for a day. How do I feel? What would it make a product that I really love to use? So awesome. Great uh, questions. I mean, great answers, guys. 
So um, let's go deeper into em empathy and how we could um, create these processes. So um, the first way that we can create the process is really by going with uh, a beginner's mind. So uh, Saki, Sakichi, I'm sorry if I'm messing up his name, Toyota, um, is the Japanese inventor of Toyota. And he has the five Y techniques that we use um, today. So my niece, Ava, she's four years old. And then when you're implementing a design thinking approach, you go into a beginner's mind, you want to create a product or um, explain something where like a 40 year old can understand it or your grandmother can understand it. So pretty much they start in the deep process of asking, well, why is that? Why is that? <laughs> why is that? And then you ask that every time. And then from the why is that you go deeper and deeper and deeper in a cause and effect of uh, inner understanding. You start with the question, you get a little bit more feedback, you go deeper, that causes more questions. And that pretty much, that is still so successful in terms of beginner's mind that Toyota is still using it today um, in 2000 plus. So <clears throat> the philosophy and design thinking, again, like I said, all the steps are uh, flexible, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, we talked about empathizing from the user perspective. All right. And then we're going to go a little bit further um, into really, let's see if I'll go here. Okay, we'll stay a little further with really developing um, a beginner's mindset. So when you have a true beginner's mindset, um, we have all our assumptions, right? But you want to be able to uh, observe without judgment. Um, you want to question everything and you want to be insanely curious when you have that begin beginner's mindset. And you also want to find patterns that are uh, common among a lot of your user test groups. So we talked about uh, Sakachi, the why is that, um, asking that over and over, over again five times. So the next start step of the process in design thinking is define. This is where we clearly find a problem statement. So in design thinking speak, uh, that would be what's called your design challenge. So in this design challenge, um, to me, this is almost important um, as empathize because this really sets up your framework for your entire design thinking, right? So you have to think about it in terms of like, I don't have Google Maps or Apple Maps. I have like a compass in an old school map navigation. So I really have to really define the problem clearly because it's not going to recalculate for me. So again, this is the framework that um, sets up the rest of the process and you define stage builds on data collected from the empathize phase. So again, we only have so much time for here, so I'm not going to go too deep um, into define, but if you actually want to look and see, I'll add this to the chat too. This gives you entire worksheet um, from IDEO on how to impl implement the define phase and make sure that you answered all the important questions in the define phase. So I'll drop that in the chat as well. And then going more deeply into define, okay, write your design challenge down, keep it short and sweet, uh, try to make it one, one sentence as possible, make sure you align your impact goals with it, and then there's also an impact worksheet that we have a link, define who your audience is, um, that's again, that's building on your persona, a lot of that should have been defined um, in your empathize phase. Do your make review your info and make sure the design questions feel right and framing the right design challenge is the key to arriving at a good solution. All right, problem statement. Now, once you get here, this is how you know when your um, problem statement for the business case user or the, for the designers, your design challenge is completed. You have to be able to clearly articulate and answer these questions. Um, you should be able to clearly answer, what are we trying to solve? For whom are we trying to solve? What different ways can we approach solving this problem? How can we act on it? If you can't answer those questions, you need to go back to the drawing board. And I'll pause just for a second. Does 
anyone have any questions? I understand like you can't video, but um, anything in the chat, feel free to pause and stop me at any time if you have any questions at all. Check in. All right, I'll keep going. So further ways kind of to define, and this um, you get screenshot and again, also save um, your, your Google Sheets uh, Gmail and I could, or not Gmail, but whatever your email address and I could send out these. But this is again, further things for you kind of to research. Affinity diagrams, empathy maps, the five ways, space saturation, the four W's, group and space separation. Okay, simply the best. Yeah, there's, so there's a link um, that is a little bit earlier uh, in the chat, Matthew. If you put your email address on that Google Sheet, um, we could pretty much, I could, I'm gonna send out all the, um, I'm gonna send out the this PowerPoint to everyone. So that'll be a little bit easier so I can keep everyone in the same framework. So right now, I'll kind of go over a quick overview of what all these different things mean. But again, um, kind of Google it to further research. The main point of this is what I really wanted you all to get and understand that design thinking is really a mindset um, that you have to have. And these different strategies or tactics are things you can implement it. So um, my last talk was, uh, per se, last year at Startup Week, my friends gave one on design sprint. Design sprint is a tactic that you could use in terms of design thinking. So um, it's really about a type of mindset and a certain way of thinking that causes you to ask impactful questions that can really help you create innovative products. And again, I want to make this clear, this is not limited to designers. This is product owner, developers, businesses, anyone who wants to do create innovative products. So some of the things I'll talk about. So we have uh, the space, saturation, and affinity, the affinity diagrams. So there you create collages and group insights and stories, observations, um, individual pieces, notes. They can be interconnected with each other. Um, empathy math, mathing goes a little bit deeper. Um, intense thought work and their often parts offer the insights and help problem framing. Uh, point of view statement, com combining user description needs insights and elements into one compelling ac actionable statement. Um, the four W's. So, and the four W's, this again, this is more in questions and very inquisitive questions, um, asking the right questions, right? Who is experiencing this problem? Who are you focusing on while they're trying to solve the problem? What is the problem? The main point that stands in the user way. Where is the problem happening? Is it physical, mental, or digital? What is the context around the problem? Why is it important? Will the user get substantial value out of the problem being solved? So that is pretty much a lot of the defined steps. And Kelly, the kind of the same thing as Matthew. So if you go up, let me see, I'll drop it again. So we just want to kind of keep this here. Um, if you put, uh, fill out this Google Sheet, put your email there, and I will send out the slides to everyone. So that's kind of further research to go on yourself and define phase. Uh, the next step is ideate. So I almost kind of hate this statement because I'm a very quality person, but the reality is when you're ideating, um, you want to choose quantity over uh, quant uh, quality. So you're just throwing out as many ideas as possible. So this is where you're seeing all of those, um, a lot of those sticky notes and every time you see seeing design, you think all designers do with sticky notes, but it's really just um, brainstorming, getting ideas, looking for patterns, bringing out as much as possible, sketching, brainstorming, body storming. Um, that goes into what someone, I, I can't recall who it was earlier, was saying, actually putting yourself in the user's uh, shoes. So you're doing really um, active storytelling. So I love idea, ideation as a first step. Oh. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I guess, Mike, but you got to, I, I like empathy because you have to, you might want something, but that might not be what the user needs. So, oh, very project management. You know, I love it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so sometimes we think um, the user wants a product, but I think uh, empathy is most important because 
um, this we're designing their product, not what we want, you know, even though we're designers, Mike. I get what you're saying though. But it is this is a very brainstorming, is a very, very fun process. And then after you brainstorm, uh, the next step after we did all of this is where you uh, prototype and test. So prototyping um, is a really cheap way to test out if your solutions work. Um, keep in mind, um, again, <laughs> being designer or a business person, right? Um, I know we're attached to our ideas, but what you have to understand is someone's rebuttals are equally as important, if not more important than just the validation of their ideas. So you have to take all that in account um, and take it back to the, the entire design thinking process if they're um, really giving you actionable rebuttals. Um, and, and usually, <clears throat> another thing that's different for designers, a lot of times they don't recommend high fidelity prototypes because you go fast, but if you're implementing the design thinking process, you want to do high fidelity prototypes because you want your user, your end user to be um, realistic and connected to the, the application as much as possible. So you want to really shoot for high fidelity prototypes at this at this juncture. So when you're prototyping, um, let's, con let's continue. So again, we can't go too far off, but we can't go too off with the, the other way either, right? So some of the main things you wanna look at this kind of Venn diagram, you wanna make sure it's feasible, it's uh, viable, and it's desirable. So you, it's kind of like walking a tightrope. You wanna have that delicate uh, balance, right? You wanna, go, you wanna go so far and you're thinking about React and the back end or all this stuff, but you don't wanna go so on the other end and be too loose where you have kind of like a written out sketch prototype because uh, the people won't know how to really interact with um, your app or your product. And again, I'm, I'm speaking so much in terms of technology, but giving them something, it's not just, it doesn't per se have to be an app or a website. Design thinking um, for the people that may have came on uh, later, this is a methodolo methodology and it's a mindset. So um, it's really built for innovation of products. So <clears throat> if you're doing it in terms of the digital world, some things that I would recommend for high fidelity mockups would be Adobe XD, Figma Sketch, or Envision. Um, if you want video and audio, um, I would recommend Flinto. And if you want to do some basic programmable actions, but you don't want to per se hire a developer, which I don't recommend um, in the juncture of prototyping and testing, uh, Azure or Framer um, can do programmable actions. And same thing, once we, once we got through all those different stages of prototyping, define now you have to test um, and user testing, right? So good places to start would be uh, usertesting.com. Uh, the beta list is a good place to test as well. And yeah, and then Veronica, so Cassandra, um, I wish I could pin this here, but I don't know if they have a pin feature, but she dropped um, a link to where you can actually um, put your email and you'll get, um, <clears throat> you get all the slides. So I just kind of want to have everyone's emails in one place and I can just send out the slides all together. Awesome, thank you so much, Cassandra. So some of the places that you can go to test your app will be usertesting.com and beta list. Um, also again, develop when you're being, doing testing, you, you went through all these phases. So you should have a pretty strong uh, persona of who you want to test. So have that persona ready um, when you're testing uh, your application or product. And here we kind of have some more helpful links. Um, so if you want to really go through a workshop and workforces uh, through books, there's a Design Sprint 2.0 by IDO. Um, and they really did a lot when it comes to like marketing this design thinking uh, process. We have inter design, inter sorry, Enterprise Design Sprints and there's another design kit um by or design kit or by ideo as well and again here's the thing to download the slides and here's kind of my info so um you guys can feel free to connect with me at linkedin uh join the meetup group um and, and at this time i guess so i saved about 15 minutes here um if you guys have any does anyone have any questions on design thinking any processes that they were confused on and 
they want to go a little bit further in detail on, please uh, drop it in the chat as well. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Pete. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I, like I said, um, it's a lot of information, so I really can get, do a talk <laughs> on each one, but I think the most important thing is like you guys knowing the, the mindset and the process, because again, uh, empathize is the most important thing. Um, that's what really stands out design thinking from lean, agile, and all these other methodologies that you, it's a user first, uh, human centered approach. Um, and again, you could look and search for things like affinity maps or how to run a design sprint, um, the sticky notes, <laughs> all that good stuff. But the main gist of it is, looking in the frames of the user and also validating um, your product with tests because a lot of times we have products that um, people don't need. <laughs> we think they need it, but the best way to validate is to test it and start that process all over again. So can you please share some more examples of how you implemented this anecdotes, lesson learned, putting teams together? Okay, yes. So um, right now, so I work, uh, that's a great question, uh, James. Right now, um, besides my business, I'm a, a lead uh, developer and designer at a financial services institution. So two of our campaigns, we actually uh, introduce uh, this design thinking process. So Wealth and Transition, um, that's actually our award-winning campaign, and we're actually doing a little bit more awards with that. And we also uh, did one for uh, Harness Volatility. So they're talking about um, in terms of stocks and stuff, so it's hard to really make a financial institution exciting, but <laughs> we did. So with that, we did the affinity mapping process as well as notes and user testing and research. So um, designers, um, uh, business managers, directors, financial writers, they all got in, a, got in a room and we started with kind of like the harness volatility. And then we, one thing when you're implementing these processes, what I like about this is um, you, when I do it, I do it in a way where the hippo, right? So the hippo is like the highest person in the room, highest paid person in the room or the lead doesn't have all the say because some people are a little bit more shy. And a lot of times in these processes, you write notes and you uh, do things like that. You do the sticky notes, you put them on the wall and you see where, um, patterns of how we talk, are we talking about are created. And from the patterns, we take kind of the best. And we, we did that from the basics of the title from the imagery, uh, pretty much every step of the process, we did design thinking with these um, award winning campaigns. And then our customer, our clients are basically financial advisors as well as financial institutions. So our persona is a little bit different from the average person. So we're not per, per se directly to the consumer. We have our financial advisor or uh, uh, financial um, institutional investor in the middle before you get to our end client. But so our focus is kind of on the financial advisor and the institutional investor, but that's pretty much how we implemented a lot of our uh, processes. Um, okay, any design insights on productized services, how to sell services versus goods online with one click. We have a variety of platforms on our platform market, trying to educate them on how to sell their pro products. 20 so I don't, I, pre I pretty much don't have the way that I think, um, I don't, it, the pricing, um, so I have another uh, person that's going to be talking Wednesday, and he's, he's, he might still be on this call, uh, Mike B Beagles, make sure you're there um, Wednesday at 10 a.m. storytelling for your business. Um, yep, he's still there. <laughs> so, but I'll just let you know kind of how I price, right? So um, I, I price per se, based on a value. And I think I'm not going to give way too much of his presentation, but he'll kind of go deeper into value-based pricing because depending on, that's when you um, get there asking a lot of these um, imperative or these thoughtful questions um, is what really makes you an expert in terms of how you price things, right? So sometimes you can price per hour, sometimes you can price per service, but it really depends on who is your client and what what what's the goal for them? So it gets into deeper, like what is the story of the brand and what they're really trying to achieve? So um, when it comes to pricing, it really is thoughtful, pre uh, thoughtful questions and really understanding um, your client's business. And each client is, is really different. So, um, so yes, yeah, same thing Mike is saying, value, firm, fixed, or delivery-based pricing. 
So yeah, it just depends. So I don't do a flat out uh, price and fee. It really depends. It really depends on the client's needs and the client's story. And Michael will get deep into that. Um, he has a whole pre presentation about storytelling and stuff on your business. And that's just, that's his entire, that's his lane. <laughs> so feedback. So make sure you're here 10 a.m. Um, Wednesday. Check out Mike's presentation. Awesome, awesome. So <laughs> that, <laughs> I think I'm all talked out. <laughs> Thank you all for coming and uh, hanging out with me for this. And I'll be excited to see you on the next sessions.